Hello, this is Storia's Radiology and my name is Lee. We were talking about uncle herniations. Today, I'm here to talk about the eponyms. Then, we'll have to open our dictionary of medical eponyms of brain herniations. On the first page of this book, we are going to introduce the concept of an eponym. And an eponym is a person after whom a condition, procedure, task or classification takes its name. On the next page, we will be introduced to our guest list. That is composed by Dürre, Kernahan and Pahidou. Now, let's give a big round of applause for our first guest. <laughs> and this is Henri Dürre. Like you can see, he is French. A French neurologist had contributed to the knowledge of cerebral circulation and the physiology of the brainstem. Now let's move on to the circulation of the brainstem. Highlighted in blue, these are the pontine arteries. They are perforating branches from this main artery for the brainstem, that is the basal artery. This artery goes anteriorly on the brainstem region. This is a patient with a rapid growing tumor on the brain. We just dissected the skull for you to see what's happening inside. This tumor is growing up and will force the brainstem against the sphenoidal bone. Now let's zoom in the brainstem to understand better what's happening here. The compression of these little pontine arteries will rupture the walls of the vessels and will produce a hemorrhage. And Dure, when discovered this condition, had a brilliant idea on how the doctors will call this disease. Hemorrhagie de Dure. In English, we call Dure hemorrhage. We have to know that Dure's hemorrhage are small hemorrhage or multiple hemorrhages seen in the medulla or pons of patients who are rapidly herniating. And we have to know that this is a very deadly situation discovered by this French doctor. The classical appearance of Dure hemorrhage is a single small round hemorrhage located in the midline of the medulla or pons near the pontum mesencephalic junction, like you can see here. Often, however, this hemorrhage can be multiple. Now, put your hands together for our second guess. <laughs> and this is James Watson Canahan. He was an Irish-American pathologist. He was credited with developing a widely used classification system for brain tumors. He also studied these pathways. These are the cortical spinal pathway and the cortical bulbar pathway. These tracks originate in the cerebral cortex, carrying motor fibers to the spinal cord and the brainstem. They are responsible for the voluntary control of the musculature of the body and the face. These two tracks together forms the pyramidal tracts. To study these pyramidal tracks, we are going to call this little guy here and use our X-ray vision to look inside his body. This is inside his head. And this is his spinal cord. The pyramidal tracks will originate on the cortex and its fibers will go all the way down. And at this level, that we call the pyramidal decusation, these fibers will cross the midline to go to the other side of the body. These fibers will still go down and connect to another neuron. And this neuro, second neuron will connect to the muscles to establish the muscular contraction. Well, we can conclude that the pyramidal tracts will be responsible for the motor control of the contralateral side of the body. But that's a normal patient. That's not what Kernahan was talking about. Now, our patient have an epidural hematoma. And there will be an uncle herniation through the tentorium compressing directly the brainstem of the same side. 
there be a compression of the pyramidal pathway on the same side as the lesion as well. This lesion will turn off these tracts before the decussation of these fibers. As a result, this patient will not have power to contract the muscles of the right side of his body. In conclusion, we say that a lesion of this side before the pyramidal decussation will lead to weakness on the contralateral side. But that's not yet the conclusion of Carnahan. So let's call him to help us. Please, Mr. Carnahan, give us some tips. The tentorium is a rigid structure while the encephalic structures are very soft. What does it mean, Mr. Callahan? I'll point it. The cerebral pedunco will be compressed against the contralateral tentorium. I'll show you an animation here. Highlighted in green, this is the uncles. This is the uncle herniation compressing the cerebral peduncle against the tentorium. So let's see it again. So this is a normal patient. But in Callahan's patient, the free edge will compress the cerebral peduncle and the contralateral side of the lesion before the decussation, turning off the power to the other side of the body. That is the same side of the lesion. To sum up, the lesion on this side will compress the pyramidal tracts against the tentorium on the contralateral side and will lead to weakness on the ipsilateral side. And that's why a motor weakness on the same side of the lesion is called a false localizing sign because it points to the wrong direction. But Mr. Callahan was not happy with his name and he obviously called this Callahan Notch phenomenon. And now put your hands together for our last guess. <laughs> this is Henri Parinou. Like you can see, he is also French as our first guest that was called Henri Duhé. And they share the same country, they share the same first name, and they share the same passion in medicine as well. Both of them were neurologists. But Henri Parino had other passions. He was an ophthalmologist as well. That's why he is most noted for his work in the field of neuro-ophthalmology. And he is considered the father of ophthalmology in France. Pahindo discovered that the compression of the superior tactile plate, pointing in the blue arrow, will lead to a supranuclear vertical gaze disturbance. This condition should be called dorsal midbrain syndrome, but Pahindo obviously had a better name for this condition, and he called Le Syndrome de Pahindo, in English, Pahindo syndrome. Now we are going to see a patient with Pahindo syndrome. When the patient is asked to look up, she will present an impaired upward gaze and a convergency, retraction nystagmus. And if you like the video, give a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you, bye bye!